Welcome to tutorial 6 which is the second of three tutorials demonstrating how to load models in OpenGL. Once again there's a direct link in the description which takes you to this tutorial source code. The first model loading tutorial which demonstrates how to use a simp to import object text files which have been exported from 3D modeling software doesn't explain how to combine multiple meshes for rendering with a single draw call which is the purpose of this tutorial. I've ended up modifying the original model loading class to incorporate two new methods for combining mesh data together, but I've also left in the original method, which means you can easily choose between each of the three model loading options. So for the main CPP file, the only things that have changed are the model loading class constructor, which now has two additional parameters, being a reference to the shader, and the draw method option that you've selected, and then within the main loop we now have just a single call to the process draw calls function, which begins processing the drawing in accordance with the chosen method. The original load model function remains virtually the same as before and is still used initially to retrieve the data from a SIMPS data structures as the starting point, which is then processed either as separate meshes, the same as in model loading tutorial part one, or instead becomes combined in one of two ways, vertex data as vector lists or vertex data as struct lists. The first of the two combined meshes options has virtually the same data structure as the original multiple meshes method, apart from two things. Only one instance of this new struct is required to contain all the meshes, but with the vertex array object now encapsulating five vertex buffer objects instead of three, and it also has a mesh number vector list and a sampler array vector list instead of a single texture handle per mesh. Now let's walk through each function call of this first combined meshes option. The process draw calls function is called from within the main loop and simply selects the chosen draw method. The populate sampler array function cycles through the texture list handles and sequentially sets the fragment shader's sampler array to the corresponding active texture unit that has been bound to the given texture handle. For the combined meshes 5 vbo function, note that there are six items in total that need copying. The first three, which are the vertex positions, normal vectors and texture coordinates, are each copied as a whole by using the C++ insert function, which inserts each vector of those data values from the original mesh list vector into each of the corresponding new vectors which then contain all of those same values. By cycling through the total number of vertices in the original mesh list, then per vertex, the mesh number vector is then populated by the mesh number of that particular mesh. The sampler array position vector is populated by comparing the texture handles in the texture list to the texture handles in the mesh list, and then when they match, the for loops coin index position value becomes the sampler array position. The vertex indices are, as always, independent of the vertex buffer object contents, in that they reside in their own element buffer object but they first need to be offset before then being copied to the new indices vector. This is achieved by adding the size of the previous mesh's vertices vector to the current mesh's indices values. The set buffer data combined 5 VBO function remains the same as in the original version of the model loading class, except that it now contains two additional items, which are the mesh number attribute and the sampler array position attribute and also that each buffer object now contains all of its particular attribute values for the entire model, which corresponds to there now being only one vertex array object. The draw meshes combined 5 VBO function calls GL bind vertex array followed by GL draw elements, and the show FPS function simply displays the frames per second along with the draw method in the console window. The second of the two combined meshes options is structured quite differently to the first, which enables all of the data to be combined into just one vertex buffer object. The fundamental difference is that each of the five vertex buffer objects items, namely the vertex position, normal vector, texture coordinates, mesh number, and sampler array position, reside as singular items within the vertex struct, which then becomes owned by its parent struct as a vector list of that vertex data, along with array and buffer object handles and vertex indices. Compared to the combined meshes option that uses 5 VBOs, as previously discussed, this second option has only two functions that are different, as follows. The combined meshes 1 VBO function is essentially quite similar to the 5 VBO version, except that none of the items can be bulk copied by using the C++ insert function as before, 
simply because there are no longer any vector lists that contain just one type of vertex attribute data. Although note there is now the parent vector, vertex data, which is an instance of the new vertex struct. This instance of the new vertex struct has each of its five singular items assigned with the corresponding item value of the current mesh. Although note that the sampler array position corresponds to the texture list index position, which itself contains the texture handle. The vertex indices are populated in exactly the same way as for the first combined meshes draw option. Within the set buffer data combined one VBO function, because all the attribute data now resides in just one single vertex buffer object, there is now only one call to GL buffer data, which therefore requires that we provide an offset argument to each of the GL vertex attribute pointer function calls. The C++ offset of function returns the size in bytes from the beginning of the structure to the specified member, and therefore the offset name is simply the same name as the attribute being formatted. The only differences in the vertex shader are the addition of the two input attribute locations 3 and 4 which are the mesh number variable and the sampler array position. Note that in tutorial 3, which is the spinning orbiting cubes tutorial, the model number was passed to both shaders as a uniform variable for the same purpose that mesh numbers are now entering this vertex shader through an input attribute. The mesh number is useful for both identifying and transforming the meshes independently of one another within the vertex shader and also for setting the mesh fragment colors independently within the fragment shader. The fragment shader is also virtually unchanged, which now uses a sampler array instead of a single sampler, and there's also an if statement that checks which index position of the array to use, which is zero when using the original multiple draw calls option, or the particular texture image index when using either of the single draw call options. Something that's worth mentioning is how all of this affects performance. There's the small fixed cost of the draw call itself, and also the much more significant aspect of validation of change of OpenGL state, which according to John McDonald from NVIDIA, as stated in the Steamworks development video linked to in the description, the most expensive state to change is the render target, followed by the shader program, texture bindings, calls to GL vertex attribute pointer, etc. From my own testing of this tutorial's program, rendering the RC model helicopter, it made very little performance difference whether making 150 individual draw calls, one for each mesh, or just one draw call by using one of the combined meshes options, although note that only very little OpenGL state is being changed between the draw calls. I decided to compare the performance of my GTX 1070 versus my RTX 3080 Ti, rendering 27 identical copies of the RC model helicopter that I created in Blender, which in total amounts to a whopping 7,376,967 vertices. The results are from testing using the draw multiple meshes option, which for this example totals exactly 4,050 draw calls per main loop cycle on the CPU side. But the numbers get seriously crazy after the object file that was exported by Blender is then passed by a simp, after which the new total vertex count becomes a staggering 26,491,101, accompanied by an indices count of 42,789,000, 555. It's also worth noting that both computers being tested are each connected to Quad HD monitors, which means there are more fragments to process during rendering than for 1080p high definition. The GTX 1070 performs an impressive 115 frames per second, but not surprisingly the winner is my RTX 3080 Ti, which performs an astonishing 330 frames per second, which is 2.87 times faster than the GTX.